What's up everybody, Noble Comics here with the next round of the Tournament of Power. Today we have Starkiller from Star Wars versus Naruto from Naruto. We're going to talk about their skills, their abilities, advantages, disadvantages, and ultimately who would win if they were to fight. But first, the results of the last match where we had Obito versus Silverfang. We see here that Obito is going to move forward to the semifinals against Luffy. But with that out of the way, let's get into today's fight. So Starkiller from The Force Unleashed and Star Wars broadly, and Naruto from Naruto. Again, we are constraining Naruto to his sage form, though he does have access to Karama's Chakra. So no truth-seeking orbs, no full Karama mode, anything like that. Now, we have seen in a previous fight in this bracket, right? We have seen Starkiller defeat my guy, another Naruto character, just barely eked out a victory against him. Though in that video, I did say that I, I thought that my guy would win, but your votes were obviously different. And in this one, I think it's going to be kind of similar. So I'll, I'll start again just by breaking down each character, then we'll get into the actual, you know, who would win. And I'll start with Starkiller. So Starkiller was the apprentice of Darth Vader. He was a very Force-sensitive child, very powerful, and Darth Vader decided to take him in after killing his father and raised him to be a Jedi-killing machine. Um, I, and I do want to clarify quickly, that we are talking about original Starkiller, though I will use some feats from his clone, from Force Unleashed 2, because their stats should be roughly equivalent. If anything, the clone might be more Force powerful, at least that's how it was shown in the game, you could argue. But Starkiller was extremely skilled in pretty much all forms of Force combat, not only with his lightsaber, where he was skilled enough to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with multiple Jedi Masters, as well as, you know, very powerful Sith as well, including Darth Vader himself. Is extremely powerful with the force itself we see his force repulse here literally turning people to ash it's so powerful he's able to quickly dispatch multiple groups of, of enemies at once with his force pushes he's got force lightning that can incinerate people he does have access to like a jedi mind trick as well uh, which he uses to convince people to kill themselves and just overall being a jedi or a sith whatever you want to call him being a force user his stats are pretty much like super enhanced from what a regular human is. Um, they're not quite like god level, but his strength, his speed, his durability especially, are super peak, you know, from, from what any human could survive. And I'll touch on that here in more detail. For example, we see him taking a beating from Darth Vader, slammed around on the ground with his force ability. We see him being hit by blaster bolts, which could one-shot a normal human. He's taken hits from TIE Fighters, from Rancor, from AT-ATs. Like, he's taken hits from, from pretty much anything that you could imagine. Uh, also, tanking lightning from Darth Sidious, which is extremely powerful. But one of my favorite feats of durability, specifically, and strength that you see from him, is in The Force Unleashed 2, whenever this massive spaceship is crashing into a planet, and it's burning up as it's entering the atmosphere, and Starkiller jumps out of it, and is falling, like, miles from the sky, again, at speeds where the spaceship is burning up. He's getting hit by TIE Fighters mid-air as he's falling down. And then a TIE Fighter actually like clips him, carries him off, which again would split in half a normal human. Um, would split in half like the most durable, powerful human on the planet. Yet Starkiller's fine, and he actually grabs this TIE Fighter, spins it around and throws it. Again, incredibly strong, incredibly durable. Way more than what you'd expect of even like an enhanced human or a metahuman. We've also, with the Force, again, we've seen him be able to carry, throw, push, pull, all this stuff with regular people, no problem. We've seen him be able to catch TIE Fighters mid-air and crush them using the Force. We've seen him be able to crush ATSTs in his hand using the Force. And probably his greatest Force feat ever is pulling down that Star Destroyer from the sky. And I know technically, right, lore explanation behind that is well it was already falling and he just helped guide it down but you can clearly see that he is pushing this ship down from the sky crashing it into the ground and that ship is like massive it's a mile long massive battleship 
that he pulls from the sky. The strength required is crazy. It's it's one of the most powerful feats we've ever seen from any forced user, um, probably outside of the books. I know in, the, in like the books, um, some pretty crazy stuff happens. But like on a screen, that's one of the craziest things we've ever seen. And it really just speaks to Starkiller's power. Because again, this guy was trained by Darth Vader. His lightsaber skills are pretty much second to none. Again, defeating every single Jedi Master or Sith that he comes across. He was even able to overpower Darth Vader himself, who is incredibly powerful. His durability, again, is obviously insane. Again, taking hits from all these people and everything that I've mentioned prior. And his force power is off the charts, being able to wipe out armies all on his own and to go toe to toe with some of the most powerful force users that we've seen. So overall, he's looking like skill, top level of Star Wars, durability, top level of Star Wars, strength, top level of Star Wars, speed. He's also incredibly fast, again, being able to deflect blaster bolts, no problem, being able to keep pace with, again, these other Jedi and Sith, no problem, being able to catch TIE Fighters out of the air, be extremely fast, no problem with that. Dashing midair, he's practically blurred, moving so fast. I mean, he's he is incredibly fast as well. And on top of all of that, just his actual personality, the dude is ferocious. He's an absolute beast. He's going to hammer on you until you're not moving anymore. He's absolutely a menace, um, driven by rage, uh, which can be both a good thing and a bad thing that we see in the game. But he is absolutely a menace. Now, if we turn over to Naruto, everybody knows Naruto. Let's talk through it anyway. Because again, this is Sage Mode Naruto. So picture the fight he had against Pain and also some of the stuff he did against Madara as well. Um, but this is a very powerful form of Naruto, not quite very top, but definitely close to the top. And for Naruto in general, I think it's kind of similar to that of a Jedi where his stats are way above what a normal human would be capable of. Strength-wise, we've seen Naruto hitting his enemies so hard that the ground around them is shattering. We've seen him throw casually these massive animals as well. Skill-wise, uh, Naruto is not the greatest Taijutsu master of all time, but he's definitely very good. We see him throwing hands with pain, we see him throwing hands with pretty much anybody who gets in his way, and he's usually quite successful at that. And in this form, also, he does have some help because he can summon pretty much uh, Kurama's arms to come out of his chakra cloak to help him fight as well, or help him with his different techniques. Durability-wise, he's able to take hits from pain, who have... Hits that can, like, level a forest, um, the guy's very powerful, but Naruto can take hits no problem, he can take hits from- And this Chakra Cloak, again, is so powerful that he was able to split it among, like, 70 different people, and all of them were able to survive a massive, I don't know, maybe island-level attack, no problem, just because they had a piece of his Chakra, so he's obviously extremely powerful and extremely durable. Notably, Naruto has a few particular techniques that he uses, he knows a ton of Jutsus throughout the show, but his main ones that he likes to use is obviously the Shadow Clone Jutsu, where he can clone himself into tangible clones, right? They're not just visual clones. They are tangible, they're able to do damage, but they're obviously very easy to destroy as well. Like any hit will destroy them pretty much. And he often uses many variations of the Rasengan, which is a spinning wind chakra attack, and it's extremely devastating as well. A powerful enough Rasengan seems to be able to pretty much KO most enemies that Naruto comes across, and there's different variations, like I said, from a Rasengan to a giant Rasengan to a Razen Shuriken, which is a ranged version that is so sharp it cuts at the cellular level. It's just an extremely powerful attack. Overall, with Naruto, you're looking at a character who is extremely skilled in multiple different ways, right? When it comes to hand-to-hand -to -hand combat, he's extremely skilled. Um, when it comes to his actual jutsus and his abilities that he's able to use, he's extremely skilled as well. Some of it is kind of simple, but the way that he is able to use his abilities expresses a lot of combat intelligence that he does have. He's extremely strong, he's very durable, and again, he does have sort of a, a healing factor as well. And he is extremely fast. Speed in Naruto is kind of different, right? Where characters are, are moving faster than the eye can see regularly. We look back all the way in like OG Naruto where just what was like the three tail cloak that he was using was moving way faster than the eye could see for very fast and powerful ninja who could already move faster than the normal person's eye could see. I mean, at this point, Naruto is extremely fast along with everything else that we just laid out here. So what does it look like if these two actually meet on the battlefield and want to fight? Who has the advantages? How does that look? Well, comparing stats directly, when it comes to pure strength, I think it goes to Starkiller. I don't think we've seen Naruto do anything as impressive as like 
pulling a Star Destroyer from the sky, crushing an ATST using just the Force. Anything like that. Durability wise, it is kind of hard to say. I feel like Starkiller has a greater showing for his durability. However, I don't want to discount Naruto because I know he is very durable. But I don't know how to directly compare the lethality of like a TIE Fighter's blasters or just a regular blaster. Like, I don't know how that would affect like a Naruto character. Would they shrug that off? Would that insta kill them? I don't quite know how that compares. So for now, durability, I'm going to leave kind of up in the air. Speed wise, Naruto definitely has the advantage. I think that Starkiller is very fast. And again, he does have the force, which could maybe give him a little bit of insight, a little like precognition almost. That could help <laughs> help that speed differential. But Naruto, I think, is, is way faster. Because while we see Starkiller do things extremely quickly, like blocking blaster bolts and things like that, we don't see him ever like moving faster than the eye can see, necessarily, like we do with Naruto pretty regularly. So I think Naruto definitely has the speed advantage. But then when it comes down to pure skill, it gets a little bit more difficult. Hand-to-hand -hand combat, Naruto is obviously better, but Starkiller doesn't fight hand-to-hand. -hand. He does, like, sword fighting with his lightsaber, which gives him extra range and extra lethality because, of course, you can't block the lightsaber. It'll just cut right through you. So he does have sort of an advantage there. His force powers also give him a range advantage, I would say. Um, telekinesis is obviously very strong. His force push and force lightning would be very strong. And if Naruto were to, say, do a Shadow Clone Jutsu swarm, his force repulse could probably just eliminate all of them at once. Though I do think if Naruto were able to land a Rasengan on him, it would do massive damage. I, and I definitely think that he could, just from what we've seen him do in the past, I definitely think he could. But I don't think that would put Starkiller down, necessarily. Um, it'd definitely take more than that. I think if he hit him with a, a Rasen Shuriken, there is a shot that it just cuts him in half and kills him. And I guess that's sort of a question. I mean, we've seen Jedi freeze blaster bolts, which are essentially like plasma energy midair. So it's like, could a Jedi catch a Rosin Shurigan midair? I don't know. My gut kind of says, no, that's not how it works. But I mean, I guess it's open to interpretation. So this fight does seem to kind of lead towards Starkiller. And again, like I said, in the last one, I said that Might Guy beats Starkiller because up close, Might Guy's Taijutsu is way superior, I think, to Starkiller's sword fighting ability. And Might Guy was incredibly fast when he was using the sixth gate. And his power output, his actual destructive capability, was incredibly strong to where I only think it would take a few hits to put him down. Naruto's a little bit different. I don't think his hand-to-hand -hand is as good. I don't think his speed is as fast, and I don't think his power output is as strong. Though it is definitely comparable, but the method of attack that my guy uses, I think is superior against an opponent like Starkiller than the method of attack that Naruto would use. So, win condition for Naruto, I think would be overwhelm him with Shadow Clones, hit him with enough Rasengans to do some damage, use your Taijutsu and hand-to-hand -hand abilities to avoid getting cut in half and try and do some damage to him as well, or at least get some distance from him. And then hit him with Rosin Shurikens if you can. I think he kind of wants to keep sort of a middle distance, not super up close, not super far away, throwing every tool that he has at him until he secures victory. Starkiller's win condition, I think, is to get up close, to destroy his clones, whatever else he has, and just cut straight through him brutally, Telekinesis, pull him forward, stab him with the lightsaber, whatever you have to do, and just end it. And which of these do I think is more likely? Probably Starkiller. So that's who I would say wins this encounter. With the only major other factor being Naruto's speed, which could definitely give him the victory as well. But it's not up to me. You all get to go vote in the communities tab for who you want to win. And whoever wins this is moving on to the finals. So I'll cast your vote carefully, and I will see you in the next video. Take care.